Hey. Hey, Dre. What's going on? Not much. Just chilling. So, did you have any questions for us about the whole shit? Uh, before you start, I want I want to make sure that you know that I did try calling you, uh, but you weren't around when that happened. And uh, if I'm honest with you, I I was not expecting to to hand in my chain in flag that day. But uh, the way that the conversation went, that it just it just turned that way. You know? Okay. So, what I want to know is what happened? Like, what exactly happened? Like to push happened us to that point or to, in the conversation? In the conversation and to push you to that point. I mean, for me, it was, um, I was telling Reggie that I didn't agree on a lot of stuff that we were doing. Um, I thought that a lot of stuff that we were doing, uh, if I'm honest with you, I'll be, keep it hundred percent real with you, right? Like, uh, ever since Ray was put in the council position, um, we've been uh, gearing towards more of like a pressing point, like where we press others and we're steering more towards uh, even though like Benji will deny it, like more to be more, more south side. And uh, when I created seaside with them, I, I didn't want like I was part of the Vagos. I was the war general of the Vagos. I was, I lived and breathed that. But the main reason that I left the Vagos was because I grew old of that. I grew tired. And. Uh, while I'm 100% for defending ourselves, making sure that when we need to we need to fight back, we're deadly. Just like I always said, silent but deadly. That started turning into we're pressing and we're gonna see what happens. So in the conversation with Reggie, he started talking to me and he started talking. Like he 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 said he wanted to do a checkup. Give me one second. Yeah. So Reggie called me and asked uh, like how JJ was, how his blood pressure medicine was going, stuff like that. Because uh, JJ had his hands tied up with ripping wires out of a car and everything. So Reggie called me, and then he said, uh, "I'm going to call JJ because I want to ask him some questions about all of this medicine that he's on." And then that turned into, hey, come up to Nexus for a checkup. And then it was kind of an ambush uh, for JJ in this conversation where he went up thinking it was a checkup and turned into something else. Yeah, it's, um, he started talking to me about my, my blood pressure medication. And like I said, I was not, I had no idea that conversation, like any conversation similar like that was going to happen. Like he started taking my blood pressure, medic like uh, my blood pressure talking about blood pressure medication and then he switched the topic on me about what is it that I'm hearing that you, you didn't want to roll out to or like you did, weren't interested or like you said that it's not your problem with the saints and that um, that uh, uh, you're picking choosing your battles when before that point I was always available whenever that shit happened with a hidden which honestly wasn't supposed to be a gang thing I was literally just gonna like uh <laughs> Yeah, was we were dealing to... with it with Patrick. Yeah, it was, it was, I was never expecting Benji to start and say like, okay, we're going to ask for 250k from them. I just wanted a fucking apology. I didn't want things to escalate in a gang war. Like, the way that I see things, not everything needs to escalate to gang wars. And we are at that point where, uh, where people like Donut and Nigel push things straight to war, like if anything happens. And um, and that comes with an influence. And uh, listen, I was given an ultimatum to basically roll out no matter what uh, for whether I believe that it's right or not in any situation or leave my flag there. And when he said that, it didn't take me too long to decide that 
at that point, what I helped create changed. And it's okay, things change. Uh, and it definitely did hurt giving away my flag and in my chain. Because I, there's, while I didn't really mesh with uh, some of the guys that are in the crew right now, I, I still consider you my family. I still consider Terry my family. I still consider Ivan my family. Like, there's a few people in Seaside that I think that are still in the way that I thought Seaside could be. Well, like I said, things change. <clears throat> and I was put in the position where I had to choose one way or the other, and uh, that's what I chose. And for me, when I joined Seaside, things were very, very different. Uh, it's like there was the whole Civ side side of things, and then there was just Seaside. Uh, there were a lot of people that did a lot of different things, but it very much gave the vibe of we're a higher tier heist crew type thing. Because that was like what we did. It's like we did tons of heists together, we did business type shit together. Uh, it was very much like never really shooting and doing shit unless like we really had to. I think when I was a hang around, there was like one war. And then there wasn't anything for a while. And then when people started getting recruited, it turned into more and more wars that I thought weren't necessary for most of the time. Uh, there were a lot of people that I don't get along with. Uh, and it's just different mentalities that we have. Uh, there's more than one time where I would come around because JJ was like, hey, we have uh, a vault or whatever. Do you want to come help? And I would hear the words, do this and we're going to instantly get away, which, I mean, honestly, it takes kind of the fun out of it if you're just going to instantly get away in 30 seconds. Uh, S plus boost, uh, smalls would, before we even knew if we could scratch cars or could just drop them off, uh, he would already be saying, oh, we're shooting to get this out, and you don't even know if you can actually get the car or not. And you know me, it's like, I will shoot somebody if it is a good enough reason for me to shoot them. A car, to me, is not a good enough reason. Uh, the big war against Hydra when they turned in Michael... I've known Michael for over three years. I would do anything for that guy. Uh, but half of the people that were rolling out all the time had no fucking clue who Michael is. And I would have gone if anybody asked because Michael is my friend and I've known Michael forever. But uh, I talked to Dragon about all of this and the, his only rebuttal is, well, it's different with Hydra. But... You have a bunch of people that have no idea what they're fighting for versus somebody that actually really fucking knows what they're fighting for. And it's the people that don't know are always the ones that are picked. And, um, well, go for well, guess. Okay. with me, if me and other people are not on a, the same wavelength, I just, it's better for me to distance myself. Because I'll wind up getting triggered and mauled and spout off of whatever things. So I distance myself and I would include the people that I specifically like really liked and really wanted to hang out with. So you said and, that uh, you consider me as family and Terry, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I think if we continue any more conversation right here, right now. I'm going to bring Terry down because I'll be honest with you both. Terry really wants to talk to you. I don't know how this conversation is going to go, but just to uh, be pre-warned, he's not happy. Oh, I'm going to bring him down here because I know he wants to talk to you both. Y'all like okay. want that? What, he's going to shoot us or what? No, he's not. I told him that, that we will no, no be pulling guns or anything like that. And just before we do it, I'm, I'm going to tell him to put his gun in the car. 
just to avoid the, anything like that. I'm fine with Terry coming. Yeah. Guess. Yeah, I'm fine with Terry. Because all the people that JJ said too. It's like you, Terry, Ivan, Dom, Shano, Reggie, Michael, Dragon, they're all family, but there's yo, yo. people outside of that. Yo, where are you at right now? We're not on the same page. I'm at the towers. You Where the are towers? you talking with them? Yeah, you want to come behind Tequila La? Oh, we was doing it together, man. We are, but you just woke up. I didn't expect you to wake up, and then you tried to call me. So I said that I'm going to bring you down here. I'll Before talk to him soon, man. I'm going to do a vault. You talk to him soon? You're going to do a vault now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I delayed that so I could Did you talk meet to them? Yeah, I'm here waiting uh, waiting for you. Yeah, they can come on my terms, but I ain't meeting them. <laughs> you sure? I'm positive. Okay, I respect it. All right, I'll uh, let them know that you want to talk to them another time. I mean, fuck it. You want to come pick me up? Come pick me up, Ben, at the towers. Okay, I'll come and get you and come back. I am. All right. I'll... <laughs> I need to go get Terry real quick. Okay. He's just at the tower. I'll go get him. Uh, all right. Oh, I can feel his energy already. <laughs> oh, I can feel his energy already. <laughs> oh, it's getting spicy, boys. It's getting spicy. Can you do me one favor? Can you do me one thing, Terry? Like one What's thing. That? I never ask you of anything or anybody. But can you not shoot them? Can you do me that? Or can you not? Let's I'm gonna see what he got to say. Okay. This is getting spicy as fuck, chat. I'm not gonna lie. I said that we were talking and I was busy. Sorry. Going on. How much? Dre said you're not happy. I'm disappointed. I'm hurt. I'm hurting. My brother and sisters left me. Never wanted what to happened? Terry. What happened? Like, you're one of the closest people that, like, we have. We would always do anything for you. And we did do anything for you. But yeah, I'll never forget that. At the same time, you gave up on me. Gave up on us all. There's a lot of people, like I told Trey, that I just don't mesh with. For lots of reasons. Uh, it's not the same group that I joined, uh, and you probably have noticed that the group has shifted from when I joined and I got blooded in with MP to what it is now. And I'm not going to speak for JJ outside of just saying, like, he just told Dre that that's, it's not the group that he founded. You two are one of the closest people I... I had in Seaside. And uh, while we grew together, like I started distancing myself with other people because we, ne we never meshed, we never agreed on stuff. Like the way that I saw things was not the way that they saw, like that other people saw things. Uh, on anything on anything that I said, like I, w I was always rebutted. And uh, even though like I, I wanted to make things work, uh, it just, it never ended up happening. And when I when I talked to Reggie, the people that made me 
hesitate or it made me even like just not a rat say that I wanted to turn my flag in my chain where people like you, like Ivan, like Shano, like Dre, the people that I really mesh with and the people that I really saw in the vision of Seaside for the future. But in my opinion, things changed. And uh, in a group, it's okay if things change. But there comes a point that I tried so much that I think it was better it was better for me to distance myself as a whole and um, and just not be the wall that kind of just restrained the group or the, the person who, who would put resistance on things that clearly some others wanted. Whenever you took, whenever, whenever you um, decided you had to go on a trip because you weren't feeling it, the first thing that I thought was like, okay, how can we help Terry out? How can we make make sure that I was the only person? The per like whenever, whenever we uh, thought about that idea, there were like, there were some people who were like, why are you doing this? Because we care about you. We care about the people that were really close to us. Yeah, the two of us and Ivan were the main ones making sure you didn't get absolutely fucked. And that's something I really appreciate and I'll never forget. But at the same time, does Benji know? Does, did you speak to Benji about this? No. Did you give I, him the decency? I, I called After him. all these years, JJ? Okay, uh, when I was given an ultimatum, first of all, I expect him to reach out to me and talk to me or want to talk to me. Because if, right, if if a council member comes and gives me an ultimatum, ultimatum to stay or leave, uh, I'm expecting him to make the first move and ask what the fuck happened. Not the but other you're way the around. one dipping and out in now. Because he gave me the ultimatum. What do you expect me to do when Reggie says that? What was the ultimatum? To fight no matter what, no matter what I believe in the in in any situation, or to leave the group. Are you not meant to fight for what's yours, though? You're not meant to fight for your gang, your family, no matter what. What happened with the area. hidden? Well, the hidden the was hidden never, was supposed, never to... supposed to be a war. The <laughs> hidden was staying between JJ and the tuner shop, and then the hidden decided to go off and do their own shit. I guess. Well, I don't want to turn it say... into war. Benji turned it into war. Well, I will say one thing. Yeah, you wanted to contain it, and you wanted it to be just a, you know, a small thing. But when the hidden of uh, going out in an active six and literally hunting you, JJ, Kaz, me, Terry, anybody, that's not a you issue. That's a our, that's a we issue. Because we all brothers and sisters out here. When you are in the shit, that means I am in the shit. When Terry's in the shit, that means. You know, Cass is in the shit. We're all in the shit together. But yeah, you decided to take the hidden on and shoot them and ocean dump them and everything like that. But they retaliated. But we're gonna have your they back at the end. They were even gonna get day. ocean dumped if it wasn't for Nick. Well, yeah, but that's a well, that's a decision that was made and backfired. But we all had each other's back at the end of the day, and. You know me and Terry will slide on anybody for both both y'all. That goes for everybody in Seaside as a whole. But when the Saints thing happened, you know, you guys didn't really want to have anything to do with it. But we were there for when the hit happened. I was there for the first round, Dre. And in the second round, we started. We decided to start war round two when it never should have turned into a war. <clears throat> Those guys are ghosts. Those guys are fucking meaningless. And we decided to give them the time of day and just hunt them for days, for weeks, and making us look like fucking idiots, man. Like we we turned into a meme. Like everybody was like was calling me, like uh, like I'm the HR person of Seaside, and they were like literally saying like, oh, I got G checked inside of my house, because people were going inside the people's houses checking to see if they're like, and they were like, oh, are you saints? Are you saints? Like, bro, like uh, it got to a point where like it's it was kind of a. I would wake up and instantly get calls from people saying, and I quote, your shitty Southside gang is G-checking us. 
They said that we defend at seaside. Who was the one that said team. that? Everyone. We ain't no Southside gang. What happens in war? You go around looking for the people. Are. You don't know who's who, so you asking people on the street. So you saints, so you anyone? Well, that's what you do when you're in a war, no? You g-check people until you find them. Terry, a group went into mine and JJ's store in Sandy Shores with two very, very recognizable cars where people knew who owned those cars and still ran inside to the store and g-check Mayumi and Violet. Dragon was there. Dragon, who knows those cars, decided to storm anyway without giving them a fuck and then just going to the second floor that's... that's a hidden floor that only Seaside and a few people knew and uh, decided to G-check the people upstairs in the hidden area. Oh, and that's something you don't agree with? No, I don't. I don't know, man. It just hurts. I'm going to be honest. It hurts too, man. I don't know too, what man. to think. And I understand. I understand. You. you can be mad at me all you want. Like, I understand that. Like, I understand that in your eyes, I failed you. And I wish I could have made it work, Terry. I really do. You want to know what I'm feeling? I'll be honest. And I'm straight with yeah. you. The yeah, day that it. I came around as a hang around for Seaside, you were a council member, right? Yeah. And... You and me clicked on the first day. And I looked to you with the utmost respect. I knew what you were about. I knew what you believed in. I knew that, you know, how you operated and everything. And you were in a position of power on council, right? And yeah. a lot of the opinions that you made for Seaside as a whole were great. Real productive and some things were moving. Everything was going on. But I don't know what happened. But I'll be honest with you. And I'll be straight with you. The day, JJ, that you stepped down as counsel, I felt like that was the day that you got disconnected from everything. You might not you see that. You might not believe that that is the truth. But I've always been an observer. I don't really speak too much unless my opinion really matters or if my observation is like, you know, worrying me. But I will admit the day that you stepped down from council is the day you kind of disconnected yourself, not just from the table, but from a lot of things. And the only time I used to see you around is you would call me for votes. You would call me for banks and stuff. But, or I'd see you for suppressors. But that's the only time I would really see you around unless I push myself to connect with you more. I just felt like you were very disconnected. And I'll be wanna, honest I with you, I really wanted to, I, I, I said to KJ, and I feel like this whole thing is sparked from me, I'm not gonna lie. And I feel like the reason why you're in this position right now is because of me. I feel like that's what what's happened. Because I did say, that I feel like you are disconnected from everything that's happening since that day you stepped down. And I want to be the person to bring you closer, to bring you closer to everything. Nigel too. We felt like the disconnect was there and we wanted to make the disconnect into a reconnect. We wanted you closer. We wanted you to be a part of not this, whatever the fuck you want to call it, a gang or whatever this family I wanted to bring you both closer to everything and connect and have the chemistry that, you know, you used to have back when you were counsel, when you were in that position. That goes not just for you, JJ, that goes for Castle. And for me to see you not in any seaside shit at all, I feel like, I feel like you just gave up. You didn't just give up on how my position was in council. You just didn't give up on. You just didn't give up on the fact that you get, got the ultimative. I feel like you gave up on. You gave up on Terry. You gave up on Ivan. You gave up on Nigel. You gave up. You gave up on me. So 
And that's how I feel. I look to you as like this guy I could look up to and learn a lot from. But well, then you just opened up the door and walked out and closed it on everybody. That's what I feel like has happened. I'll and give it, you an insight on why. Mm -hmm. Hold on. There you go. I will give you an insight on why I left the council and why I stepped down. And you know what? If I'm honest with you, like, yeah, I kind of gave up when I, when I stepped down from council. Because on every meeting in the council, I was voted two to one on decisions. Every time. I was trying to make the conscious decision, I was trying to make the responsible decision, I was trying to make sure that the, the, the group and gang as a whole would be good. And then it was either Drake or KJ or Drake and Benji. Reggie was absent for like months. So like every time I was voted two to one in decisions and then Benji decided at the end like with the majority. So it was tiring, it was exhausting. I was, I was so stressed out, I was, I felt defeated to the point that my opinion didn't even fucking matter. Like Drake and I never get so, so eye to eye because he's, um, he's someone that while he's very good in the field, he's someone that will always go with the, the rash decisions, with the decisions that you don't really think about it and will, will seek out conflict. And I'm not into that anymore, man. Like, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, in the, like, like I said in the meetings in the past, like, I'm not in the, like, one of the guys that I used to be. I used to be the guy that pressed people. I used to be by the guy that G-checked everybody in the South Side. I used to be the guy that held down trap houses and spots in the South Side. That's not me anymore, man. He used to G-check no... me when he was still a Vago. <sighs> I remember the time that we sat on the side of the hill in Sandy. We had conflict with somebody. I don't remember who it was, what it was about. But you, I remember you just sitting there and I remember telling you, right? You know, as a council member, aren't you meant to uh, speak your mind, fight for what you believe in? Even if you get out, like outvoted or anything like that, at least you stood your own and you fucking told him what's up. And you went with your heart and you actually believed in what was going on. Even though people didn't agree with you, it didn't matter because you were the one that sat there and pushed that point. And even though that you were outvoted and you felt like you were, you know, it was always two to one and you needed to rely on Reggie. You can't rely on everybody. They, you need you need to be the one. I hear about this JJ all the time, this Vago back from the day who used to be ruthless and never like never took a shit from anybody. You're saying you're not that person anymore? I ain't gonna lie. I think that's that's false. And I don't think you believe that either. I think you need to find your spark and get back to what you used to be. What you were about. What you were, uh, you know, your ambitions. Pull that out of you. I've been in that position. I've lost what I used to be. And then I found myself again. And I believe that you can do that too. Not just you, but Cass as well. You are the one that needs to stand up and fight for what you believe in. Yeah, you've left Seaside and you don't want to be a part of the family anymore. Does it still does not mean that you can still get that spark that you have lost. But the only person that can do that, not Cass, not me, not Terry, it's not Benji, it's not Reggie. It's you. You have to find that. And like I said, the day you step down from council, that's where you lost everything, your spark, everything. I'll be honest. And I've seen it. Did I speak on it? No. I was just a little hang around at that point, you know, a little shit kicker. Didn't really have much to say. You know, I was not doing much. But now I'm a member and I'm going to speak my mind when I see something. And this is what I've seen. Is from the person that would always be around JJ and spent the most time with him, everything through all that, he was stressed out all of the time when he was still in the council. Like, always trying to make sure everybody was up good, making sure that people had shit for jobs, making sure that people had stuff to do in general. Like, he was stressing out all of the time. 
And when he stepped down, it was like a massive weight got lifted off of his shoulders that he didn't need to worry about anymore. And he wasn't as stressed anymore. He was just chilling, living his best life as much as he could. And like it disconnected him from a bunch of people in the group, maybe. But it was better for him personally as somebody that spent a lot of time with them. I always vouched for you too. I always had your back, even when you were hanging around. I always spoke highly of you, and I always thought you were great, both of you. Which is why I tried my best to make sure that you guys were in the best position you were, best position you could, and uh, tried my hardest for you for you two to thrive. And uh, even though, like, I'm, I left my flag and I left my chain. You guys can always reach out, and I, I, I still consider you guys family. You two, at least. I said JJ, but I don't consider you anymore. <laughs> and that's fine. The moment you put your flag down and said you don't want to be a part of this family, that's it. This shit is done, man. I don't have my uh, yokai stuff on me, but I will be giving you that too. That's fine. And we're not going to do anything to you for wanting to leave yokai. It's just if you want to leave, then that's fine. I don't know. I mean, I joined that for you two and to be to be closer to you two. And, and now you both left. So now I'm leaving as well. Okay. I wish that you wouldn't, but I understand why. And, like, I don't hate you or anything for it. If you needed anything, I'd still do whatever to help you out. Now, as much as I want to finish this conversation off, I think the boys are having trouble. With Hydra. Yeah, I have heard there's like a war party. <clears throat> Stay safe, guys. Yeah. And if you ever need anything, not that you will need the, to get additional stuff, like, not even like that, just. Yeah, just if you need we'll anything. We'll be here. If you're alone and want a bunch of degenerate crackheads to roll around with. Well, all I'm going to say is JJ Kaz, good luck with the next chapter of your life. That's all I got to say. Yeah, you guys too. As much as I wanted to fucking do something, I think the boys are in trouble, man. Wait, really? Yo, boys? What's happening? I don't know, I was hearing some shit on the radio. Nig Nigel wasn't responding, but none of the...